I just got a really simple point that I want to make from the passage today. Jesus died for you. That's all I want to say. He died for you and he died for me. And the reason I want to make that point is because often that's not something we really believe. We, we talk about the cross a lot and we might wear a cross on our necklace or have it tattooed on our body somewhere, but we don't really get it in our hearts. We don't really understand the fact that this death that happened 2,000 years ago on a hill outside Jerusalem is Jesus himself dying for us today. He died for you. And there's a poem that I always find helpful. I came across it in a David Watson book a while ago. And it's written from the perspective of one of the criminals who is crucified next to Jesus. And he's kind of looking at Jesus the carpenter and just kind of talking a bit about how unjust the whole situation is. And the poem goes like this. It says, It was on a Friday morning that they took me from the cell. And I saw they had a carpenter to crucify as well. You can blame it on Pilate. You can blame it on the Jews. You can blame it on the devil. It's God, I accuse. It's God they ought to crucify. Instead of you and me, I said to the carpenter, a hanging on the tree. Now Barabbas was the killer and they let Barabbas go, but you are being crucified for nothing here below. And God is up in heaven and he doesn't do a thing with a million angels watching and they never move a wing. It's God they ought to crucify instead of you and me. I said to the carpenter, a hanging on the tree. And the astonishing biblical revelation is this. It was God that they crucified instead of you and me. And it is him hanging on the tree. And when Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's God the Son being cut off from God the Father, separated from him for a moment in eternity so that we never have to be. I can repeat it loads and loads and loads of times, but really we need the Holy Spirit to help us understand that this is a death that takes place for us. So if I were you, and what I'm going to do is read this passage again and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to show us in our hearts, not just in our heads, that Jesus died for us. And because of that, we're set free, we're forgiven, and we can come to life today. It's a terrible thing to read about. But it's also incredibly and astonishingly the most, the best news we could ever receive.